Hello, I am very happy and honored to be here with you and participating in this very important meeting named Orto Region Bahia 2021. I would like to thank all the organizers, but especially the chief of this group, Dr. Fabio Lana, one of the thought leaders and pioneers in the world in this field of regenerative medicine. He inspired me many years ago to study and to discover the secrets of platelets, cells, and growth factors. I also want to thank Dr. Lucas Fonseca for his kind invitation and congratulate all the team because you are doing a very important work spreading the message of regenerative orthopedics and minimally invasive therapies to treat musculoskeletal injuries. Today, the purpose of my presentation is to show you a new study that we are gonna publish very soon that we did in OASI Bioresearch Foundation in Milano with a group of Professor Alberto Gobi about a minimally invasive cell-based therapy to treat bone marrow lesions of the knee. Thank you very much again, and I hope you enjoy my presentation. We know that when we face a biological problem, we try to find a biological solution with a less invasive procedure, with reduced morbidity, accelerated treatment, and enhanced recovery. Bone marrow is one component of our body that have a lot of different type of cells that we know, for example, white blood cells, which include neutrophils, lymphocytes, eosinophils, monocytes, and basophils. But we also have many red blood cells, platelets, hematopoietic endothelial progenitors, and also mesenchymal stem cells or progenitors. But these MSCs are very, very few of the mononuclear cells within the BMAC. So this brings one of our questions that if we need too much MSCs to have a reaper effect. We also know from Arnold Kaplan that these mesenchymal stem cells, when a vessel broke or when an injury occurs, these cells sense the environment, but the behavior is very different in vitro than in vivo. In vitro, these cells can differentiate in different type of tissues with osteogenesis effects, chondrogenesis, and adipogenesis. But in vivo, the situation is different. And now we know that these cells have an immunomodulatory effect with immunotolerance, trophic effects, which include angiogenics, anti-scarring, anti-apoptotic, mitotic effects. These trophic and paracrine effects reestablish a regenerative microenvironment in the site where, where we want to uh, repair a tissue or regenerate uh, a tissue. So these cells now we call pericytes because they are in all basals and they are not stromal cells. Arnold Kaplan taught us that we have to change this paradigm and we now call medicinal signaling cells because these cells produce bioactive factors like a pharmacy. For many years, we work a lot using BMAC uh, with a scaffold to treat focal cartilage injuries. You can read the technique very detailed and very illustrative in this fantastic book. We also published this year in the ESCA Congress the 10 years follow up using bone marrow aspirate concentrate with this scaffold, showing very good results at 10 years with very good tissue quality. But we also study the correlation between colony forming units and the clinical effects. And we found that there is no correlation between the number and 
the clinical results. That's why we start thinking about using bone marrow aspirate without concentration to treat bone marrow lesions. But we first need to describe and define what are bone marrow lesions. These lesions are MRI findings in fluid sensitive T2 images, as you can see in this graphic. The term bone marrow edema is no, no longer used because we have not only edema, but also necrosis, hemorrhage, fibrosis, and cysts. And they all look very similar in the MRI. We divide bone marrow lesion between two big groups, traumatic, for example, after an ACL injury, after a meniscal or root tear, but also we have a traumatic group of patients. And we subdivide in, in different stages. SIFC is the spontaneous insufficient fracture of the knee, Song is the spontaneous osteonecrosis of the knee. Maybe this is the next uh, stage after SIFC. And of course, in early stages of OA, we find this typical image in the MRI. This is a study published recently in the GBGS from the United States, from the group of Mayo Clinic, Aaron Creek, and Daniel Saris. They evaluate 223 patients with SIFC and Song. And they studied the follow-up and they found that at three years, one third of those patients needed a total knee replacement. That's why we understand and we know that it's very important to detect in the early stages and treat it very quickly to avoid and prevent this catastrophic sequel. This study is a systematic review published in the ICRS journal by the group of Elisabetta Cohn, Maurelli Marcacci, Bernardo Di Matteo, and they found 12 studies using different type of orthobiologics to treat bone marrow lesions of the knee. Two of, of them are about uh, using BMAC. This study is one of the best studies using BMAC intraosseous from the, um, the author Philippe Nigou from Paris, France. He have a lot of experience, more than 25, 30 years using BMAC. And this study is very, very important to understand because they evaluate 140 knee osteoarthritis patients. They decide to do in one side a total knee replacement and in the other side intraosseous BMAC infiltration. And they found that the group of BMAC only 18% needed a total knee replacement at 10 years. And the clinical results were very similar between those treatments. But one treatment, the total knee replacement have a lot of complications comparing to the group of just BMAC intraosseous infiltration. We decided to develop this technique with a group of Alberto Gobi in Milano at OASI Bio Research Foundation. We published this technique a minimally invasive approach to treat subchondral bone marrow lesions of the knee. This technique consists of three parts. The first part is the very well-known bone marrow decompression to decrease intraosseous pressure and necrotic bone resection. The second step of the technique includes the bone marrow aspirate administration to improve the healing potential through the MSCs, PDGF, TGF, beta, and bone marrow BMPs 2 and 7. The third step include the administration and the implantation of the bone autograft, which include osteoconductive, osteoinductive, and osteogenic effects. These are the surgical instruments, including an introductory needle, an aspiration cannula, and blunt estillate, an eight gauge trephine needle, the bone graft structure, and the measuring proof. As you can see in this short video, this is the marrow solution introductory needle with the aspiration cannula, aspirating one cc of each niche, rotating the cannula 360 degrees to aspirate in the different side, as you can see in the video. This cannula has a closed end, which has also a lateral holes to aspirate the bone marrow with more yield of MSCs. First, you need to, of course, be very careful, introduce the sharp estillate and then the blunt to progress 
into the iliac crest. Here, the third step showing the percutaneous bone graft harvesting using this bone graft extractor through using the same kits. And this autograph under microscopy examination, the cancerous bone dowels microvascular network can be seen. In this video, you can see the technique a multi level aspiration using 10 cc syringe, rotating the needle, aspirating 1 cc. Then using the Jam GD8 gauche and with the same hole, very careful with the hammer. And we use the bone structure, which is very sharp. As you can see here, we can extract the bone dowel. We use fluoroscopy to target the lesion, direct to the lesion, crossing with the MRI images in the surgery room. And we introduce these small bone dowels. This is a concept that provides both biologic and structural components of bone marrow for an optimized environment for regeneration. In this step, we introduce the bone dowels and finally, the bone marrow aspirate into the lesion. The indications are patients who not respond to conservative treatment for more than three months. After conservative treatment, patient with SIF, SONC, and OA grade one and two, of course, with normal alignment. We need to remember very careful always that key to success is to treat and address comorbidities, malalignment, meniscal insufficiency, or instability. The contraindications of this technique, poor subchondral bone quality, bone fractures, osteochondral injury not well contained, osteonecrosis with collapse, and severe osteoarthritis. The advantages. This is a minimally invasive technique, one step, no need to manipulation of the bone marrow, early post-op, it does not burn any bridge, and the bone marrow aspirate increase the subchondral healing. Limitations, lack of long-term results, lack of robust uh, knowledge of OA prevention, more extensive and invasive than core decompression alone or just PRP, and additional incision for bone marrow aspiration. This is a case of a patient 70 years male with a history of chronic left knee pain, no prior trauma, tender over the medial joint line, normal alignment or instability. This is the MRI in the coronal view and sagittal view in your right. We can see a very Typical uh, image, hyperintense signal in T2, weighted MRI indicating a bone marrow lesion in the um, sagittal view also with a good tissue quality of the meniscus. We decide to do the technique, osteocorplasty, core decompression, BMAC infiltration, and bone dowels. And the results, this is the pre-op, two months with less uh, intense signal, and at 12 months, the resolution of the signal with the patient without symptoms. This is the patient walking without pain, flexing the knees, extending the knees, and also with impact, with no pain. Another case, this is a female, very active, 53 years old, with a history of chronic left knee pain more than three months, no trauma, mild knee fashion tended over the lateral joint line, normal alignment and no instability. The MRIs show this subchondral cyst indicating early OA in the coronal view and sagittal view. We decide to do the technique, as you can see in the image, the osteocorplasty, and the results, as you can see in the left, the pre-op and in the right, the post-op with a less intense signal. Now we, we submitted an article, a prospective clinical study with 15 patients with clinical results. And this study 
Uh, most important finding is that biological subchondral bone augmentation by osteochondroplasty technique significantly reduce pain and better chum function. In addition to MRI, show resolution in the bone marrow lesion at six and 12 months. In conclusion, bone marrow is an easily available source of MSCs and growth factors, including PDGF, TGF beta, and bone morphogenetic proteins. Bone marrow aspirate have an immunomodulatory and paracrine effects. And several aspects such as amount of aspiration, the concentration or not, and the activation process need further exploration with high quality studies. Thank you very much for your attention.